Namaste. Hi, I'm Eddie from Ulu Yoga. We're going to run through a Ulu Aerial Yoga Vinyasa Flow. This is a class I've been uh, developing since 2016 uh, based on the feedback of thousands of students running 50-hour uh, aerial yoga teacher trainings uh, every month uh, since then. Uh, and so the sequence of poses are designed in a way to test the level of strength and flexibility and comprehension of the students, uh, saving inversions at the end of the class and trying to follow uh, peak poses of a strength um, uh, followed by a you know, more restorative uh, uh, series on the mat here. So uh, for starters, safety. Uh, you want to look at where you are connected to, uh, how strong is the rigging. Before I jump up into the swing, hanging upside down, I just place my knee in, pop up and down, look where it's connected, listening for any signs of cracking. Looks good. I examine my equipment here. Uh, we got the uh, turnbuckle locking carabiners, uh, daisy chain straps. Uh, this is uh, my hammock, the Ulu yoga swing. Inside here it has a yoga mat so it holds the shape and then you can fold it up to create different forms, uh, making a nice uh, thick cushion support here for the hips. As you know, regular aerial hammocks and silks can be very painful and very cumbersome to use. Um, I really love my swing and um, you can still do all of the same uh, poses uh, with my swing as you can with the aerial hammocks and uh, other apparatus like belts. So I like to space the swing here just like a slightly wider than the shoulders with distance. For the mat, I'm centering the mat down between my straps. And then I pull it forwards about three quarters of the way because mostly we're stepping forward with the swing. Okay, uh, even though this is an aerial yoga, which is a new style of yoga, it's still rooted in the you know, sacred tradition of um, uh, yoga that's been developed you know, over uh, thousands of years. And so we pay our uh, respects to it uh, with the chanting of Om. The Om has the three parts, the A, uh, U, M, representing the beginning, middle, and end, or birth, life, and death of the human life, plants, the animals, the stars, the galaxy, and the uh, yoga class. So when we chant Om with this awareness, it shows a respect and gratitude for this magical gift of being and alive and healthy and uh, having the opportunity to practice yoga and, of course, uh, through the uh, skillful knowledge and lineage of uh, yoga, which has been passed down through the ages. So uh, in the aerial yoga swing, I sit forward on the front edge of it, placing the feet flat down on the mat. I space the feet a bit wider than the knees. That helps to press the knees together. Uh, I bring the elbows back. So now that the swing is pressing into the shoulders, uh, as I inhale, elongating the spine, sitting up straight, bringing the head and neck in line. You can place one hand over the other with the thumbs touching. You can focus your gaze straight ahead or close the eyes. And I like to tell my students to smile because smiling helps release the tension. Uh, it opens the nasal passage, allowing us to breathe. So the more difficult the poses are, the uh, more we want to smile, relax, focus on the breath. And of course, by smiling, it activates the receptors in the brain associated with happiness. And so we just smile, uh, we feel happy. And the aerial yoga is a fun, playful practice. It's a happy practice. Uh, with my particular style, the Ulu aerial yoga, I avoid complicated poses. I want my students to succeed and uh, build confidence throughout the class. Um, and then uh, depending how big the class is uh, and if I see students are struggling, you know, I will know in advance I need to take some poses in or out or modify them or I can level up and uh, kind of challenge them. 
but ultimately, you know, I want everyone to be included, uh, beginners and advanced. And there's uh, so many creative things that we can do with the swing. We don't need to uh, push students in a way that uh, they're going to fail and it's going to, you know, damage uh, their sense of worth. Uh, as well as uh, sequencing the poses in a way to really reduce nausea, uh, which comes by keeping inverted poses towards the end of the class. Okay, so we sit up straight. We take a few uh, deep breaths in and out to calm ourselves down and uh, set the pace uh, of the class. So we want to synchronize the breath with the flow of the movements, ensuring that we're going slow and safe. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. And we chant Om. Inhale. So, I like to begin the class with uh, standing poses behind the swing. I'll fold the swing in half, and then I walk up to the swing, spreading the feet, hips width distance, place the hands together, down into the swing, micro bending the legs, extending the arms, dropping the chest down through the shoulders, Inhale, leaning forward. Exhale, coming back, bending the knees and elbows, dropping the hips, relaxing the head and neck down. Inhale, leaning forward, pushing a bit more, pressing into the toes. Exhaling, coming back, dropping down a bit deeper. Now, the further forward you go, the more you may want to bend your arms to protect the joint. And depending on your level of flexibility, maybe you want to drop all the way down in between the feet, turning them outwards 45 degrees. Uh, starting to lift the heels, really balancing on the toes. You have the option of bringing the elbows under the shoulders. Or if you really want an intensive stretch, you can straighten the arms and pull deeply the chest through the shoulders, coming down. Pushing down on the swing to help you up, relieving the strain off of the lower spine, keeping the head down as you come up, taking a few breaths. And then finally, lifting the head. What you want to avoid as while you are extended, uh, this is coming up suddenly, that's going to strain the back. Okay, next. Uh, Again, we place the hands together into the swing, extending the arms, dropping the chest between the shoulders. Inhale and exhale. By keeping the hips square and bending the upper torso back towards the right and holding here, you feel the activation of the external obliques and a nice stretch on the opposite side. Inhale, center, exhale, twisting to the left and holding here. Inhale and exhale, we're pushing to the right, going a bit further, and you can pulse to intensify, going just beyond uh, your uh, limit. Inhale, exhale, pressing to the left, pulse to intensify. So you see, as I push to the left, I pull the right hip back, and vice versa. I'm not... Uh, letting my hips loose go and twisting all the way back. And then bending the arms, bending the knees, pushing down, keeping the head down. I reach up and climb up, keeping my gaze turned down. Inhale and exhale. And then lifting the head coming up. We can do another variation of this by now keeping the arms bent as uh, I inhale and exhale, 
I'm going to bend the knees, twist to the right. I bring the right knee up to the left elbow. Inhale and exhale, changing sides. And let's repeat that two more times. Inhale, exhale, touch the knee to the elbow. Inhale, exhale. So like this, it's a bit more challenging. You can feel a wider range of engagement in the core as well as in the sides, obliques. Again, slowly coming up, keeping the head down low as you climb up. Maybe you are young and healthy and your back is fine and you can come up and down easily. Um, but as an instructor, I'm mindful of the students. Many people come to Ariel with lower back pain and I want to use the arms and legs and the swing uh, evenly to help uh, reduce the strain in the back. Okay, next we can place the elbows down into the swing, not back here, but fully into the swing, spreading them. Uh, shoulders with distance or slightly wider and the fingers come together in the front. I'm leaning forward, straightening the body into a plank. It means I'm drawing a straight line from the legs up into the spine. The elbows are pulled here under the shoulders, stacking. I can lift the heel, balance on the toes, pulling the shoulders back, squeezing the buttocks, slightly arching the spine, lifting the chin, looking up, sucking in the belly, locking the core. Inhale and exhale here. Holding for three breaths. Focusing my gaze and I smile. And then we'll come back, cross the hand over, grab the swing, slowly pulling up. We'll do this again, now bending to the side. So I'm leaning forward, lifting the heel, balancing on the toes. Inhale, exhale, bending to the right, looking back, holding it here. We'll come to center, inhale, exhale. Bending to the left, holding here, one breath. Changing sides. This time, let's hold for two breaths. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. I really like this pose because it's quite simple. Anyone can do this when we have the forearms resting into the swing here, it provides a wide base of support. Uh, leaning forward helps us to balance. Spreading the feet wider provides a more stable base. And you can repeat this three or five times, holding it for three to five breaths each time. Really wonderful for strengthening the core, the external obliques, and uh, a nice side stretch. Uh, alternatively, you could fully open the swing, placing the forearms down, creating a wider base of support. I like to have it folded in half because that follows better the poses before and after. Next, I'm going to step forward. I'll turn to the right, placing the swing onto the ribs. I feel the swing pressed into the body as I lean forward and then take a step back. What you don't want to do is I'm gonna walk just halfway forward, then I turn and then fall into the swing, or my feet are too far back and I'll, I will slip. I walk forward, turn to the side, the swing, comes up towards the ribs, I'm leaning into it, and then I take a step back. I'm going to uh, keep the back leg straight, pressing my weight down into it. The front leg is bent and the foot's just resting here for balance. I'm pressing down the outer edge of the back foot, kind of lifting the inner arch, drawing the big toe back towards the inner heel as you see the inner arch lifts. 
I'll bring the front arm behind, the back arm overhead to support the neck, squeezing the buttocks, pushing the hips forward, slightly arching the spine back, twisting the top shoulder behind me, looking up towards the elbow. Inhale, exhale, bending down to the side. Inhale, coming up. So we're just warming up the body with the side bending, coming up and down, inhaling, exhaling. On the third time, let's come down a bit deeper and hold it for three breaths. One, two, and three. I'm pulling my head up again to reduce the strain. I reach back, grab the swing. Again, the weight is pressed into the back foot, taking the weight off of the front foot, allowing me to step it out into this modified Trikonasana triangle pose. The front foot's drawing forward in a straight line with the back foot. I'm gonna place the front arm down on the inside, the back arm comes straight up. Um, pressing down into the heels, you know, evenly into the front and back foot. So this is a modified Trikonasana triangle pose. This is about strengthening the upper back. I'm going to press my hand against the inner uh, front leg, creating leverage so that I can pull the top shoulder back and looking up towards the hand. And then I'm going to micro lift up out of the swing. This will help engage the core, squeezing the buttocks. I'm drawing my mindful attention up from the toes through the fingertips and then resting the weight down into the swing. I'm going to slide this front foot back, heel toe, spreading the legs a bit wider into a side angle pose. Now again, a modified version. I'm pulling the elbow back behind the front knee. I drop the back arm down and swing it up towards the ear and then I'm pulling onto the lower arm back again creating a leverage to help twist the top shoulder behind. Uh, same point, squeezing the buttocks, pushing the hips forward, slightly arching the spine, twisting the top shoulder behind me, looking up towards the elbow, reaching the hand away from the back foot, trying to draw a straight line through the body. Once I've hit all of these points, I can micro push up. So the swing supporting me is how much I want, 50, 80, 100%. Now it's about 50, 50. This allows me to hold the pose longer and go deeper. Then coming out, I release all my weight down into the swing, uh, reach up, grabbing uh, the strap, going to slide the front foot back. I, uh, Straighten the leg and pull up using the arms and legs equally. And let's transition to the other side. I walk forward, turning to the left. The swing comes up to the ribs, leaning my weight into it. Take one step back, bringing the weight into the back foot. The front leg is just resting here. Bring the front arm behind me. The back arm comes overhead to support the neck. I don't want to pull the neck down. Squeezing the buttocks, pushing the hips forward, slightly arching the spine, twisting the top shoulder back, looking up to the elbow. Inhale, exhale, coming down and up. Before I drop down into an intensive uh, side stretch, I want to test it out and warm up. Coming up and down feels good. So this third one, I'm going to drop down a bit deeper. Hold it for three breaths. One. Two, three. I pull the head up. I grab the strap behind me. I'm bending this back leg and I step the front foot out. Trikonasana. I bring the front arm down on the inside. The back arm comes straight up, pressing against the leg, pressing both shoulders back evenly intensely into the spine as I'm looking up towards the thumb. My fingers are spread wide. Maybe you like to press them together. Up to you. Now that I'm in the alignment, uh, going to micro lift 
up out of the swing, not completely. Normally in a trikonasana, we're reaching down to the floor to maximize the stretch. This is uh, uh, more about using the swing to support us to find the perfect alignment. Going to release down, slide the front foot back, heel toe into a side angle. The front elbow comes behind the knee. I'm stacking here the knee above the heel and then the, drawing a straight line from this heel to the center of the back foot. This back arm drops down, opening the joint space into the shoulder, lifting up towards the ear. I'm pulling back, looking up, reaching away, lengthening the spine, and then micro lifting up out of the swing. Three breaths. One, two, Three. Releasing down into the swing. I reach up, grabbing the strap. I'm going to stand up and come back. Next, I place my left foot into the center. I'm grabbing the swing down low. So you see, I have more control when I bring my hands down. Often people are grabbing up high and then they're struggling to set their knee or their heel into place. I bring here my right knee over the front edge, for me about four fingers. Uh, and then if I want to do warrior one, I'd be turning my uh, standing foot outwards, you know, 15 to 45 degrees, uh, pulling the hips uh, square, leaning my weight forward. You don't want to stick your butt out. You want to keep the low back flat by curling the tailbone in, tucking the tailbone, sucking the belly in, pulling the shoulders back and down, focusing your gaze. You can lift the arms, slightly arch back. Or you may prefer uh, straightening the standing foot, lifting the heel coming onto the toes, lunging down a bit deeper. This is our crescent lunge. Reaching up high, arching back a bit more. And one, two, three. I push down onto the front knee, pivot on the back foot, turning it outwards to 90 degrees, drawing the arms down through the center, spreading the legs a bit wider. Pull the shoulders down and back. Focus your drishti into the front middle finger, lifting the kneecap. Flexing the quadriceps, pressing down the outer edge of the back foot, lifting the inner arch. Holding for three breaths. That's about three breaths. Reverse, turning the front palm facing up. Inhale, coming back. I don't hold this too long because it's intense. We just use it as a transition to come into a side angle. Modified. I have to pull this elbow back behind the knee, bringing the back arm overhead. Same as before, twisting the shoulder behind me, reaching the arm out, drawing a straight line down through the leg, squeezing the buttocks, pushing the hips forward, arching the spine, looking up to the elbow, holding for three breaths. Reach back, we'll grab the strap. Turn your standing foot straight as you come back to the center and step out. Let's change sides. So again, Swing is folded in half. I'm stepping forward. Uh, the swing here is, uh, for me, I like it, four fingers above the knee. The lower it is, the further forward um, I will go, uh, which uh, is going to create a more challenging to stabilize. Okay. Uh, let's start with this warrior one by turning the standing foot outwards slightly, tucking the tailbone, flattening the lower back, leaning forward, bringing the arms up, shoulders down and back, slightly arching the spine. Crescent lunge, turning the standing foot straight, lifting the heel, balancing on the toes, reaching up, trying to balance through the center. I'll come back a little more. One. Two, 
three. Pivot on the back foot, turning to 90 degrees, drawing the arms down through the center, spreading the legs a bit wider as you sink down. Focus on the front middle finger. Sucking in the belly, tucking in the ribs, locking the core, shoulders down and back, chest open. Three breaths. Reverse, front palm facing up, arching back. Transitioning down to side angle, twisting the top shoulder behind. Don't relax and let your butt sticking out. Push the hips forward. Draw this front knee back, reaching the arm up and out through the spine. Three breaths. And then coming back. Okay, we will do some leg extensions now. So, important, don't be back here and bring your foot into the swing because as you lean forward and extend, uh, it will be too intense. I'm going to uh, the, allow the swing to hang here under the bar. I step up to the swing. Uh, as we'll be balancing, I want to uh, bring here, beginning with my left foot into the center. Bringing the right heel into the swing, all the way into the swing. And uh, it's not uh, crossed over, pressed into the tendon. Heel in the swing. Grabbing the swing here uh, by the shoulders, uh, extending the leg. To be safe, I'm going to micro bend the leg, flex the foot, keeping the spine straight, head and neck in line. Think about your mountain pose as you fold forward. We have the tendency to drop the shoulders and, and relax the head down. That's okay if we do so with intention, but here, with aerial yoga, this is a, a chance, the way I like to practice and teach, is to keep the spine straight, inhale and exhale, drawing the chest down over the leg, and then we'll come up, bend the knee to release. So I'm not gonna just dive down into a, an intensive stretch. I wanna test it out, warm it up, coming up and down, feels good. So on this third one, I'm going to push forward a bit more. I'm pushing the swing away from me to help pull the leg out. I'm not pulling the swing in, which will pull the leg into the hip. Feels good. So I'm going to lift the heel balance on the toes and focus my gaze on the big toe. If you have trouble balancing, you can focus your gaze on a stationary point straight ahead. And that's a really nice uh, extended leg hamstring stretch. You could repeat it three, five times. A nice reverse to this is I'm going to bend, micro bend the standing leg. I pull the swing back. You see I'm grabbing up here by the shoulders. I start to lean back, straightening the arms, balance on the toes, and then extend the leg, flexing the foot to come out. Don't lift your head. Bending the leg, pressing that foot down is going to pull you up then you can extend the leg, push forward, drop the chest down over the thigh. The further forward you go, the more the pose transforms in ultimately into a Hanumasana, the splits pose. And then we can come back and forth into a reverse and an extension. As we're leaning back here and drawing the leg up, it's similar to like a one-legged wheel pose. And we'll do one more time. I really love the stretch. Coming back, inhale, exhale. And then we'll switch sides. I could continue this flow, uh, linking up a series of asanas to create a nice vinyasa. Um, but as that is a particularly intensive stretch, I'm just gonna balance it out. Bringing the right foot to center, left heel into the swing, grabbing up by the shoulders, extending the leg, 
Micro bend the leg, flex the foot, shoulders back, chest is open. Inhale and exhale. Coming down, not so intense. I'm allowing here the straps to hang down uh, naturally in a straight line, not pulling back. Right, inhale, coming up, bending the knee. Exhale, extending the leg, drawing the chest down, starting to lean forward, push out a bit more. Inhale, come up, feels good. Let's go for it. Extending the leg, leaning forward, lifting the back heel, balancing on the toes. Nice. Reverse. Pulling the swing back, micro bending the standing leg as I lean back, straightening the arms. Lift the heel, balance on the toes, extend the leg. Bending the leg, pressing down to pull myself up. Extending the leg, pushing forward, dropping down, lifting the heel, balancing on the toes. Oh, feels wonderful. And reverse. Inhale back. Exhale up. And extending. And one more time. Don't drop your head back all the way. And then pull it up. Unless you're experienced, you have a strong neck and a great deal of flexibility. If you don't, you can tweak your neck, right? We don't want to do that. Now, switching legs. Uh, place the left foot in the center, the right heel into the swing. I'm going to turn the standing foot out 90 degrees, extending the leg, flexing the foot. Do not lean forward. This is about strengthening the upper back here. It looks like a Uttita Hasta Panagrishtasana. It's nothing like that. So here's my right leg, my right hand, crossing over the left side, pressing hard into the swing, uh, bringing both arms up parallel to the floor, pressing against the swing, creating leverage to twist back. I'm pulling the shoulders back into the spine, wringing out the toxic fluids from the paraspinal fascia tissues, releasing, pushing, flexing back, looking towards my thumb in the back end, and we do it three times. Last one, we can push and hold for three breaths. Wonderful. Bending the leg, grabbing the swing, pulling the foot inward, and then turning the standing foot out. What you don't want to do is while the leg is extended, turning that standing foot, it's unstable. We could tweak something. Pull the leg in, press the foot down. That takes the weight out, allowing me to pivot on that standing foot much easier. So let's do a reverse now. A bit more challenging to balance. Uh, you can micro bend the leg, flex the foot. This helps to keep the leg engaged more, activating the ligaments and tendons wrapped around the joints, yeah? Okay, here's my right leg, left hand. Left hand crossing over the leg, coming out the right side. Arms are up parallel to the floor. As I press against the swing, my hip is gonna lift. I wanna keep it pressed down evenly. Inhale, exhale, pressing hard against the swing, flexing the shoulders back into the spine, looking away towards the thumb. You can feel a nice twist in the lower back. Um, if you want to uh, do a three sets, uh, I'm going to just bend the leg to help release the tension. Inhale and exhale, pushing and holding. And we'll do it one more time. Last one, I'm gonna hold it for three breaths. One, two, and three. Grab the swing, bend the leg, kick out, and we'll change sides. Bringing the right foot to center, Left heel into the swing, turning the standing foot out 90 degrees. Extend the leg, flex the foot. Do not lean forward. This is my left leg, so I'll bring my left hand around the out, uh, right. 
Inhale, exhale, pressing hard against the swing. As I press into the swing, I don't allow my leg to fall out to the side. I keep the leg centered. Pressing back. I like to flex the fingers open. Maybe you like to close them. Pulling the shoulders down and back as I press and hold. And then I can release the tension and repeat it three times. Inhale. Exhale. Release. One more time, holding for three breaths. One. Two. What's going on here? Everything is activated. I'm sucking in the belly, tucking in the ribs. The core is engaged. I'm lifting the kneecap, flexing the quadriceps, flexing the front foot. In every pose, I think about every part of the body trying to create a unified whole. Okay, reverse. Find your balance. This is my left leg. I take the right hand crossing over the left side. Inhale and exhale. Pressing hard against the swing for leverage to twist back as hard as I can, pulling the shoulders into the spine, releasing, bending the leg. Inhale, exhale. Pull the hips down evenly as you press. Last one. Holding for three breaths. One. Two. Three. Release the twist, grab the swing, bend the leg, kick out. Okay, I will show you some more advanced uh, side uh, leg stretches, open angle stretches, uh, which I don't recommend, but I like to demonstrate how I believe they should be done to help protect yourself. Uh, there are a lot of aerial yoga instructors who are not trained well, and maybe they are really flexible or they have different uh, experiences with dance or acrobatics, and they can do these crazy things and they forget what it's like to be a beginner and they show them to you. Uh, and you can get really injured. And so it's good to uh, know when to pull back uh, from an instructor, uh, showing you things which are maybe beyond your level and they just kind of push you into it. Okay, so let's uh, start with the right foot, bringing the right foot to center, the left heel into the swing, grabbing by the shoulders. I'm gonna turn the standing foot out to 90 degrees, extending the left leg, flexing the foot. Okay, here's my left leg. I'm gonna take the left hand and grab the right side. The back hand is gonna reach behind me, grabbing the straps. Now I pull on the straps to help twist myself back, and then ever so gently, I'm going to lean forward. If you push too hard here, you will hurt yourself. Uh, of course, it's a nice idea to micro bend the leg to help protect. If you know yourself, and again, we're going to release and do it three times. If you know yourself and you are experienced, yeah, you can push a bit harder. I'm looking up towards the elbow. What am I doing with the standing leg? I'm pressing the outer edge uh, down, lifting the inner uh, arch, uh, flexing the uh, a quadricep lifting the kneecap, twisting back, looking up, holding, two, three, an intensive pose, very effective tool for uh, pushing the open angle to our maximum ability, um, but um, a dangerous pose that we can hurt ourselves with. Now we can do another variation of this um, by uh, the leg is bent. Uh, this is my left leg. My left hand grabs the front side. Uh, while the leg is bent and the foot is uh, close to me, I'm going to bend the standing leg, reach down, touch the floor, and then extend the top leg, bringing both hands down. I'm going to walk the hands out, keeping them under the shoulders, stretching the legs evenly from the groin. Walking back, bending the leg, reaching up, grabbing the swing, 
holding myself up. I keep the head down. Take a breath here. And then step out. Okay, let's do this on the left side. I'm going to center the left foot, bring the right heel in, grab by the shoulders, turn the standing foot out 90 degrees. Extending this right leg, flexing the foot, micro bend that leg. This is my right leg. I take the right hand, grabbing the left side. The back arm comes overhead, grabbing the strap behind me. I'm pulling on the straps to help twist back to the left, and then very carefully leaning forward, testing that out, going to release by bending the leg. I'll go a bit further forward now. Still feels good. If I push beyond my limit out of ego, because I want to show you just how flexible I am, I can strain myself, I can tear my hamstring, and then I am out of practice for a long time. Okay. Grabbing with one hand, reaching down with the other, and then extending the leg, walking the hands out, keeping them under the shoulders. I'm not going to do this three times because I've already had a nice stretch with the standing variation. Look how I'm coming up. Not like this. I walk back, one hand low, one hand high, bending the leg, pulling myself up. Okay? Turn the standing foot straight and then step out. I don't recommend doing those poses. Uh, if you do, this is the uh, overtime and experience, uh, the safe way, uh, step by step, to do them. Okay, next. We are going to do a tree pose. So the, a simple way is a, a tree pose with the knee in the swing. Bring the left foot center and bring the right knee behind the front edge a few fingers. So that's the right leg, the right hand reaches up. The rule for tree pose is that the opposite arm goes through. Here's my right leg, here's my left hand. I reach down, left hand, left side, sliding the hand up towards the ribs and then I stand on the knee, and then look, I'm still touching down with my left foot. As I reach the foot up, uh, I'm completely stable. What you'll see people do is that they lean back, both hands are up, and then they jump up. Or worse yet, they do it with the leg into the swing. But we can do this with stability and control by ensuring that the swing stays here under the bar. Okay, and I step up to the swing. I'm not pulling it towards me. I bring the knee into the swing behind the front edge, right hand high, left hand through. Grabbing down low, sliding up high, standing on the knee, stabilize, the foot comes up, right? Here's the left hand grabbing the left ankle. I pull the foot up, pressing against the inner thigh. Very important. Okay, that's my right leg. Here's my right hand. The right hand stays wrapped around the side and then the hands come together. Looks nice, but we aren't really doing much in terms of uh, strengthening or uh, stretching. So I need to squeeze the buttocks, push the hips forward, arching the spine back, pulling the shoulders down, drawing this bent knee back, sucking in the belly, tucking in the ribs, and then drawing the uh, head up in straight line. Uh, you can push this back foot down to help take the uh, weight off of the front knee, and then you can focus the eyes, or close the eyes, smile and breathe. It's a beautiful pose to meditate on, floating above the earth. It's not a difficult pose, but there are many uh, points that we need to do correctly in order to achieve it safely. Coming out the same way, right hand high, left hand low, grabbing the swing, the foot slips out and we come down. Now let me show you if we make a mistake, what happens. Changing sides, I'll bring here the left knee in, right hand high, left hand through the center. What happens? As I lean forward, I fall out. Okay, it's the opposite arm comes through. So here's my left knee. 
a few fingers behind the front edge, left hand high, right hand through, reaching down, not here, and then not here, right? Left leg, right hand through, reaching down, right hand, right side, sliding up, standing on the knee, touching down with the toes, coming up with stability, reaching down, grabbing the ankle, pulling the foot in, this is my left leg. I keep the left arm wrapped around the center. Hands come together. Engage. One. Two. Three. Coming out. Same way we came in. We can do standing tree pose. Very similar. Left foot centered. Right foot into the swing. Now the toes come up in line with the front edge. So that's the right foot. The right hand reaches high. The opposite arm comes through. Left hand reaching down the left side. Sliding the hand up as high as you can. Standing up slowly. Coming up with stability and control. This left leg comes behind. Wrapping around. You grab the ankle. Pull the foot inside. This is my right leg I'm standing on, so the right arm wraps around, okay? Engage, squeeze the buttocks, push the hips forward, arch the spine, shoulders back and down, sucking in the belly, sucking in the ribs, elongating uh, the spine by drawing the head up towards the sky. You can close the eyes and breathe. Coming out, right hand high, left hand low, releasing the leg. Look at my left arm here. It's going to slip back through, and I kind of push the straps apart so it doesn't scratch my uh, shoulders. But there's another way to come down. So, switching sides. The left foot comes into the swing. Left hand high, right hand through, sliding the hands up, standing up. The right leg comes behind and around. Right hand grabs the right ankle, pulling the foot up in high, uh, bringing the hands together. Okay? And breathe. Coming up the same way. Left hand high, right hand low, releasing the leg. Let's pass this right leg through the center. Step forward and come down. One more time. Very important. I want to show you what happens if you do this wrong. So I'll bring in my left foot. I'll reach both hands high. I'm going to lean back, straighten the leg. No. Or I bring the wrong arm through. I come up, lean forward. No. Okay, a bit more challenging pose. Our Supta Baddha Konasana, bound angle. Now, when you're working with the regular hammock, uh, there's no padding, and so it naturally squeezes up tight, which is very painful. Um, we can do this in my swing. It's still painful. It's just a painful pose, but it's a popular pose that we do in aerial yoga. So I'm going to roll up my swing as tightly as possible. You squeeze it and push it down. I want to bring both feet through here, bringing the feet as far forward as possible so that I can twist them down. My knees will come behind and around, right? Now the space between my feet is centered. I don't center one foot because then I bring in the other foot and then that's off center and it, it's going to tilt the whole body in the opposite direction, okay? So I'll bring in with the right foot the knee comes behind and around the side. I turn the foot inward. The foot is pulled, it's not here, it's pulled all the way forward. My foot is not centered, it's slightly off-centered. I reach up here, not so high. I'm reaching here just above the head, right? Now again, don't extend the leg, don't lean back, don't jump up. The goal is that we come in and out of the swing and the swing, the swing stays here, stable under the bar. I walk up to it, yeah? 
And then I bring in my foot nice and safe. Uh, don't bring that knee through the center. Both knees are wrapped around behind. Now look at this. Don't do this. Grabbing with both hands here, I'm going to lean back, bring the elbow through the center, wrapping the shoulder around through the front. Hands come together, keeping one arm wrapped around the side. Okay, and then we can flip. So the arm that passed through the center is going to reach down and grab the ribs, the fingers pointing back, and then reaching up high. That's important. The right arm is going to pass through now and match the left. Uh, reaching up high is very important. I'm going to lean forward and come upside down. It's painful on the legs here. You can bring the hands together or you can lock them behind the neck or we can do a nice shoulder stretch. To come up, I'm reaching up high, the fingers pointing back towards the knees. As I pull up, one elbow passes through the center. Very easy. But what a lot of people struggle with. Uh, here, my hands are too low, and I cannot come up. Or here, now my hands are pointed the wrong direction. I cannot come up. But here, fingers pointing towards the knees. The thumb is hooked onto the inside. I bring the hands up. I pass one elbow through the center. Easy. Okay, now, so far, we've done all of our poses standing behind the swing at this height here, one hand above the knee. And I've uh, arranged them as they float nicely, not working on one particular uh, part of the body or a stretch. You know, it's alternating between you know, stretching the hamstrings or balancing or a side angle opening. Now we're going to walk around the front of the swing. We do a sequence of poses where the foot is hooked behind. So look, the swing is folded up into uh, three or four parts, yeah? And then I'm pushing it down. I reach, uh, I, I'm not up here grabbing the swing, pulling towards me. I keep the swing here under the bar. I step back, grabbing the swing behind me. I'm going to flip it out as I kick up and point and hook. Don't open the swing, that lifts it too high. Don't be here looking away from the swing and kicking into the air. You need to look back, see the swing, flip and kick, and I'm also hopping on the standing foot, like that. Okay, so I've hooked it over the ankle, not on the top of the foot. I'm gonna reach back and grab the swing, just about the at head level, very important as we're going to be falling through the uh, shoulders into a dancer variation that we want to keep the elbows pulled in. Lean your weight forward, draw the chest down through the shoulders, lift the chin, and then you can start to lift the leg. Inhale, exhale, and then pull up. Okay, this is not dancer pose where we're using a strap to pull the leg up. It's a very different stretch. Elbows in, leaning all the way forward, drawing the chest down through the shoulders, lifting the chin, looking up. An intensive pose, we don't want to hold it too long or go too deeply. A more advanced version, I'm going to lift the heel balance on the toes and pull myself up as I lift the back leg. Okay, micro bend the standing leg as you find the balance, bringing the hands into the chest. We're going to extend the back leg, drawing the chest uh, down uh, evenly parallel to the floor. We can then reach the hands back, pull the shoulders back, lift the chin, look up. This is our warrior three, but we need to keep the standing leg uh, bent like a quarter ways. If I straighten the leg and come up to uh, warrior three, I'm going to slip out of the swing. Let's do a reverse now. Um, this is my left foot. I'll bring the right hand down and then twist the left arm back, looking up to the elbow, pulling my left knee into the center. Really nice lower back twist. Bringing the hands down, reaching towards the top of the mat. I stay on the fingertips, inhale, exhale. I jump this foot, 
bringing the fingers in line with the toes. The back leg is straight or you can keep it uh, halfway bent and it's a nice knee stretch. Dropping the hips here, keeping the knee above the heel. More intensive stretch is I can bring the forearms down on the inside and allow this front knee to fall out like a lizard pose and also bending that back knee. We don't hold this too long because a lot of students can struggle with it. So coming back up, here you can rest in the pigeon pose coming out of the swing, or you can challenge yourself into the splits, walking the hands back under the shoulders as you straighten the front leg, flex the foot, and then bending the arms to drop the chest down over the leg. Next, bringing the hands back to the top of the mat. You can jump this left foot back, come down onto the forearms, um, practicing forearm balance, like a scorpion pose. For me, anyway, I, I spread the elbows as wide as the shoulders or slightly wider, and then the hands are uh, inward slightly. I imagine that I'm holding a block here, spreading the fingers wide. Uh, you see the back foot, the toes are flexed. I lift the hips, push up, and then bring both feet into the swing here. Um, you can hold it here. Uh, we can do some core work, bringing the knees into the chest. Inhale and exhale. And keeping the head pressed up off of the floor. We can repeat this three times. You can come down and rest or keep the legs straight. And we do it three more times. Inhale, exhale. Smile, because it's challenging. Don't drop the hips down too low. This isn't too intense, right? As I straighten the body here, I'm in a plank. Okay, coming out here, you can rest in the child's pose for a few breaths. Don't stand up suddenly. Come up to the hands and knees. Keep looking down. We can pull up and down, cat and cow. You tuck the toes, sit back onto the heels. You bring the arms up. Passing through the center, wrapping the wrists around, bringing the swing in front of you. Leaning back, walking up. Okay? That's much easier. Here I'm in cat and cow. And then I just stand up. You've got a swing behind you, right? Or you grab the swing and then you pull straight up. Easiest way is to wrap the wrists. Lean back, walk up. Let's change sides. Hook the left foot. Bring the hands behind the head. Shoulders in. Lean forward, draw the chest down through the shoulders, lifting the chin, looking up, lengthening the spine, sinking down, slightly lifting that back leg. And we do it three times. On the third one, if you want, you can lift the heel balance on the toes, pull up. and pull up. Intensive pose. Micro bend the standing leg. Find your balance. Bring the hands to the chest. Extending the back leg. Bringing the upper torso down in line parallel with the floor. You can reach the hands back. Pull the shoulders back. Lift the chin. Look up. Warrior three. At least holding for one breath. And in reverse. Bringing the left hand down. Right hand up. Pushing the top shoulder behind you as you look up. Holding for one, two, or three breaths. Bringing the hands down, reaching forward, inhale, exhale, jumping the front foot between the hands. The knee is over 
the heel. Now the hands are flat, fingers in line with the toes, lunging the hips down, the, relaxing the back leg a bit. Already a nice stretch. Or bringing the arms down on the inside, lizard pose. Coming back up to plank. Walking back into the splits, straightening the front leg, flexing the foot, bending the forearms, drawing the chest down over the leg. Feels great. Coming forward, hopping back. So we did four arm balance. Now we can do arm balance, practicing for uh, handstands. Uh -huh. Spread the fingers wide, placing them spread here under the shoulders, locking the arms straight kind of rotating the elbows inward a bit. See, I'm flexing the toes, um, lifting the hips, looking back, finding that foot, jumping both feet into the swing, keeping the body straight. Do not drop the hips here. Okay, first thing, knees to chest, inhale, exhale. Pulling the hips above the shoulders, inhale, extend. Two. And three. Then we can do it with straight legs, pike pose. Half handstand. Inhale, exhale. Last one, you can come up and hold it. One, two, three. You can come down. If you really want to challenge yourself, come down to a chaturanga. You can do push-ups. You can do crazy things like pulling both knees to the sides. You can bring one leg up, spin around into a wild thing. A lot of crazy options. Resting in child's pose. As that was a, an intensive uh, series, we could lay down on the floor now. Hooking the heels over the swing. Legs are elevated. That helps to flatten the spine. And uh, uh, as we're partially inverted, we have a nice flow of blood from the feet and legs down into the body. If I turn the palms facing up, that helps to uh, press the shoulders down into the floor. Wonderful. We can also swing the legs side to side, nice and slow, flowing with the breath. Inhale, exhale. By swinging side to side, you can feel nice massage on the tailbone. We can turn this into a, a lovely strengthening pose. By just pushing to the side and holding here, you can feel the activation of the external obliques. And then we can pulse to intensify. Inhale, exhale. If you need more leverage, you can place the hands down into the swing. And then I'm also pushing with the hands, especially if you are uh, pulsing. I love it so much because we are resting on the floor with the flat back and then pushing to the side, really targeting this muscle group, which I feel is really you know, underdeveloped in uh, yoga, these uh, external obliques. Often we're just working on the central core. Inhale, exhale, push to the side, pulse to intensify. Okay, let's do our bridge pose. We place the hands face down besides the hips. You squeeze the buttocks, push the hips up to the sky. Or full bridge pose by interlacing the hands below the hips, pulling the shoulders under the back, lifting up higher. And then we can swing side to side. 
Flowing with the breath. Inhale. Exhale. What else could we do? Bend the knees, lift the hips up a bit higher, placing the palms here under the hips, extending the legs, keeping the elbows here under the wrists. I still need to squeeze the buttocks, engage the core. Don't rest passively all of your weight down into your hands here. And then to come up, it's a good idea, micro bend those legs, push the hips up and then release down. Then let's release the spine with some rotations. Inhale, straighten the legs, exhale, bend the knees, circle around. We can do five times left, five times right. Nice and slow. Inhale, exhale. And then you can change sides. Stopping in the center, inhale, exhale, circling around the back. We can do a half boat pose by reaching up to the feet, lifting the chest and shoulders off the floor. I'm not lifting the legs. I'm keeping the head and neck back in line. I'm pulling up from the chest towards the feet. We can twist one arm back, reaching up and twisting back. Holding for three. Changing sides. One, two, three, reaching up high. You could micro lift the legs out of the swing. Here, my legs are fully resting down into the swing, which is a bit easier. We can do a um, spinal twist. One way is I'll take here the left foot crossing up and over the right knee. I take my right hand, grabbing the left knee, pulling it down to the side. Or you can straighten the leg, grabbing the sole of the foot or the toes, extending the leg, pulling down. I need to counterbalance by bringing the left arm away. This we can do if you have space in your class. Holding for three to five breaths. If you're feeling some pain in your low back, of course, not a great pose to do, but that's a you know, golden rule for... Uh, so look here, uh, sometimes you have a student in your way or a pillar, I don't have the option of extending the leg. I have to do it with the knee bend, which honestly, I don't like, um, but it's an option. I find a much better stretch by just having the legs down, traditional spinal twist. Okay, coming up, I'm gonna reach up and grab the swing, I'm going to push back and sit up, crossing the legs into a Sukhasana easy pose, one foot in front of the other. I'm going to scoot back uh, about two hands behind the swing. You can just grab it on the sides, but What's nice if you bring the arms down and back through the center, wrapping the wrists, shoulders with the distance. Uh, we're going to do a nice massage here for the glutes. I'm going to lift the right hip, leaning to the left side, and then I'm going to roll around on the left buttock, pressing the bones into the muscles and tendons and fascia, giving me a nice massage, what's going to help really uh, reduce pain in the low back if you're suffering from sciatica. I believe this is a really effective technique. Going around five times, the left, and then you switch, circling around the back, flowing with the breath. Inhale, and exhale. Three, four, and five. If you have space, you can do 
full rotations. If you have a crowded class, students will have trouble following you. What I like to do then is I spin around so they just follow what they see. Because if I say left, they see right. Inhale to the right. Circling around to the left, exhale. Coming forward. And then you come to the center, stop, change sides, inhale back to the left, exhale to the right. Two. And three. You can do this five, 10, 15 times. People love it, no one is going to complain. Now, a lot of options we could do here. If you really want to work on the upper body strength, straighten the legs and just do some pull-ups here. So you see I've got the knees bent, that makes it easier as opposed to having the legs straight. To make it even easier, I'm going to take a step back. And now it's a lot less weight. I can lift the heel balance on the toes and also push the hips up as I bend the knees still too intense and I really like to do it. So I take one more step back. That's great. I'm going to lift the heels, come onto the toes. I push the hips up. I bend the arms and pull up, dropping the neck back, releasing all the way down. Do it two more times. Inhale. Exhale. And I'll hold the last one for three. Two. One. Now, if you're dealing with super beginner students who are elderly, take another step back. And we can do this. See, everyone can do a modified version of this. Pushing the hips forward, arching back. Okay? Now, once more. This swing has a cushion inside. If you're using a regular hammock, maybe you need to use some kind of foam roller or a towel to make it uh, more comfortable, or you're gonna feel pain here in the uh, thighs. Um, with my swing, I'm gonna fold it over. One, two, three. Okay, I'm going to walk forward, pushing the swing down and back here onto the upper part of the legs. It's about two hands below your navel here. I bring the elbows back in. Here I'm standing up straight. If I keep walking forward, the swing slides up. I don't want it into my stomach. I want to press down and back. And then I take one step back, right? Not too far because then you can slip. If I'm standing up straight, I don't feel anything. I take at least one big step back. Now, if your feet are together, you lean to the side, you're gonna lose your balance. So spread the feet, sh uh, shoulders with distance. Here's hips with distance. Here's shoulders with distance. Okay, I lift the heels, I balance on the toes, squeeze the buttocks, pushing the hips forward, arching the spine back, drawing the shoulders back and down to open the chest, suck in the belly, tuck in the ribs, lifting the chin, slightly looking up. Inhale, exhale. Then we can shift our weight side to side. Big toe, small toe, inhale, exhale. Wonderful technique for strengthening the ankles, improving balance. You can even push to one side and hold. Okay, bring the feet down. Center your left foot. Going to lean forward. Lift that back leg. Bring the arms back, warrior three. Pulling the shoulders back, lifting the chin, lifting that back leg. You can even lift the heel balance on the toes. Three, two, one. Release down, spread the feet, 
rock side to side, relax the neck. And we change sides. I bring my right foot center, lift that left leg, slowly bring the hands off the floor. First, make sure we stabilize. If your foot is off centered, you're gonna fall the opposite way. Maybe your foot is centered, but your mat is off centered. So it's important, mat is centered, foot is centered. Coming up, test it out, feels good, lifting the leg, lifting the arms, pulling the shoulders back, lifting the chin, looking up, squeezing the buttocks, locking the core, balancing on the toes. Two, one, release down. Spreading the feet, for me, feels nice to have the feet here and to the outer edges of the mat. I'm not here under the bar, and I'm not so far forward that the swing's pulling up into my stomach. I'm right here. I feel the weight pulling me forward and the swing pulling me back for a nice decompression of the spine. Here I can lock my forearms. Not this, but here's my left hand grabbing outside the right arm, right hand inside the left. This pretzel twist. Relax the head and neck down. Wonderful. We can uh, shift the weight side to side. As you see, I'm lifting the heel as I bend in the opposite way. We have inversion here, blood flowing into the head. What do we do? We smile, relax, breathe. Inhale. And exhale. The swing needs to be low, not pressing into the stomach. If it's painful, use a towel or a cushion. What else can we do here? We can bring the hands behind the back, interlace the fingers, draw the arms down overhead, inhale, lift the chin, exhale, chin to chest. Each time you come up and down, you can feel the shoulders loosening up and the hands dropping down towards the floor. If you're flexible, you can even twist the palms upwards. Nice to do three to five times. Next one, I'm gonna place the hands up against the swing here, not on the knees, all the way up. The fingers are pointing down. You keep your back relaxed. Do not lift your back. I'm going to push my hands into the legs. If I release the arms, I fall. This is a super intensive decompression of the lower lumbar sacral spine. My back lifts because I'm pushing my arms into the legs with all my weight, but I am not actively lifting the back. Okay, now I've been inverted for quite a while now. If you stand up suddenly, you will feel nauseous and sick. How do we transition down, laying on our back without standing up? We take this runner's lunge, left foot forward, right foot back, left hand forward, right hand back. I'm not here, I'm all the way forward. You keep your head down. The swing is going to pull you back already naturally because you are in front of the bar. I pass through the center, my left hand reaches up, grabs the swing, and I lie down. If it's a wood floor, make sure that your head lands on the mat. And here we are in Shavasana. Now, I want to lay down on my back here so that the blood can return to its natural flow. I don't want to put my legs up into the swing because that's going to keep pushing the blood into the body. Or, as we just completed the supine series, Maybe, as I was doing those uh, uh, pike poses, handstands, which was a you know, challenging practice, I could have just stood up and uh, followed up with what we just did. But that was also uh, a, a challenging set of poses. So I have chosen to uh, alternate between like pike poses, half handstand, the core work with the supine series, and then standing back up and coming to forward bending. Another good point, as you see here, that was the first time I was 
uh, halfway inverted. I was doing a forward folding pose. So as I put that towards the middle of the class, that gave me more time to digest whatever is going on in my stomach here, uh, reducing uh, any risk of nausea. Okay, now how to transition up here, nice and safe. So I'm going to roll around, keeping my head down low. I'll come to this baby sphinx pose. I've got the elbows under the shoulders, the legs are bent. I'm looking down, but my head is slightly elevated above the shoulders. So there's a slow flow of blood back down into the body. I'll hold here for a few breaths, and then I'll come up to the hands and knees. I'm still looking down. My head is still slightly elevated. Take a few breaths. Then I can tuck the toes, sit back on the heels, keep looking down. And then finally, I'll lift the head. I feel my head growing lighter and lighter with each breath, the blood flowing down. If you stand up too suddenly, you are going to feel sick. Now, here's a cool way to transition up. I'm going to walk back as far as I can. You see, I've wrapped the wrists. I'm not here. I'm back here. You see what I'm doing? In some poses, I am demonstrating what not to do. I've learned over time. If you take just two seconds to show people, don't do this, there's a much greater chance that they won't do it and you will have a much smoother class, okay? Now, keep your heels pinned down here. Don't slide your feet back. I'm going to lift the heels, bend the arms, swing forward, bring the knees down. One, two, three. And then I'll extend the arms, drop the chest. Here I will allow my tailbone to point up as I lift the chin and exhale, um, bringing the chin down, pushing the hips forward like a cat and cow stretch. Inhale, exhale. And we'll do it three times. Now to come back, bending the arms, pulling down onto the swing, straightening the legs. Now I'm going to lunge the right foot forward. I keep the left heel here. One, two, three. Step forward, lift the back foot. We come to warrior three, balance on the toes. I step that left foot back, bend the arms. Coming back down, left foot forward. And then I can just swing all the way up to stand. Okay. Gonna walk forward, placing the swing down on the hips, not on the hips, not in the stomach. Spread the feet wide, keeping one hand on the swing as you fold forward, touch down, and then we're going to walk back to the center to come up and out, laying down on the back. Now, what not to do? I walk halfway forward and then I fall into the swing. Or I'm here, I've got my feet together. It's harder to reach the floor and you can slip down. But if you walk forward, if you, first you hold the swing down in place where you want to keep it locked. You walk forward. Okay, now I feel the swing pulling me back. I spread the legs wider as I lean forward and touch the floor. Look at my hand. I bring the feet closer. Now it's harder to reach the floor. I need to lean forward more. That puts more weight uh, in pressing my feet back. But if I've got my legs spread, easier to reach the floor. And then I can walk back to the center. So let's test. Am I under the bar? Yes, I am, because I bring my hands and feet up. Now look, I, if I bring my feet up too high, my head touches the floor. I want to be balanced. Equal weight of the front and back, keeping that hands and feet close to the floor. All right? But if I'm here and I release, Oh, I'm going to slip back. All right. 
I'm going to stay on the fingertips, bringing here, Matt, uh, the fingers in line with the eyes. Usually that works as I straighten the arms and legs, lifting the chin, coming up to a high plank. Inhale and exhale. Let's do it three times. Inhale and exhale. Then we can come up into a locust pose. So I'm going to reach up, grab the swing on the inside. I slowly bring the other hand up, grabbing on the inside. Slide the hands down, lift the legs up uh, because the lower torso is heavier than the upper torso. So by bringing the legs up, sliding the hands down, it will help balance. So I pull the shoulders back, I lift the chin, look up, and then my legs are drawn inward. And slightly lifted, but they're not pressed together all the way. From here, we can push off and swing. That just makes it more fun, you know? Uh, locust pose on the floor. It's a really great pose for strengthening, you know, the back, but it's not so fun. But here we do it in the swing. We're floating back and forth. That's great. We can do it a lot longer. So what's going on? Squeeze your buttocks. Pull the shoulders back. Lift the chin. Inhale, lengthening the spine, flow with the breath. Inhale and exhale. Now to come out, keep holding on with the right hand. You bring your other hand and feet down. And we have the option here. Um, we can walk forward and uh, fall back through, lay down on our back in Shavasana. Or we can do handstand. So. Here I am in the center, going to pull the hands back towards the feet, not here, on the fingertips, right? Uh, because this mat is a bit slippery on this floor, I'm going to bring my hands off to the side. I'm going to start pushing forward, straightening the arms, lifting the legs. Lock the arms straight, relax the head and neck, spreading the legs halfway open. Draw the chest down through the shoulders. You can walk back further into a handstand. Don't go back too far or you will fall over. And then here, I can turn my elbows in. Think about chaturanga arms, uh, pushing up and down. Now coming out of this, got to be careful. I'm going to take a couple steps forward, bringing the feet down and then walking forward. And then I'll come back and lay on the back. Over time, with practice, we can learn flying forward to warrior three, flying back into handstand. There's a, a lot of steps to achieve to do this gracefully, such as learning how to keep your feet and hands close to the floor, grazing. If you bring your feet up, your head's going to fall down. Flying forward into Shalavasana. You can flip and dive down. Okay? That's for another workshop. We'll lay down on the back and rest. So how long do you rest for? Well, how long were you inverted? How much blood is in your head? Can you tune in and feel the flow back into the body? Over time, you're able to recover more quickly. I'll show off here. Um, I'm going to reach up and grab the swing above the cushion. I'm going to bend one leg back. I'm going to kick the knee up through the center as I pull straight up. 
and then I'll flip over. It's going to hook here onto the waist, and I will uh, land in the uh, locust pose. And then I can reach one hand under, pull myself up. And then there's a lot more steps, but uh, we'll leave it at that. Okay, next. I'm going to open the swing and we're going to sit down. And I can do it at this height or I can bring it up higher. Let's bring it up higher. I'm going to bring it up to the inversion height, which uh, as you see here, it is precisely uh, four fingers above my knee. Now, when I'm measuring the height, I'm not here looking at it. I don't pull it towards me. I don't put my fist down into it. I don't hold it like that. I take my thumb. The, the, the swing haze hangs under the bar. I take my thumb. I push it down. That is exactly how low the swing will be when my full weight is in there. And then I step up to it. And now I can measure precisely um, uh, the, the height of the swing in ratio to my legs. I have kind of short legs. And so maybe what works for me is going to be different for someone else. Each finger is approximately one centimeter. So this is one, two, three. It's exactly three centimeters. That's pretty good. Uh, between, you know, two, three, four centimeters above the knee. I like that. I, I've done the whole class from here. I can do the, the next set of poses uh, sitting in the swing like that, which is good because then I can easily have the feet flat down on the floor. But we're going to bring it up to the inversion height, uh, which usually is uh, two loops up. One, two. One, two. I don't lock my turnbuckles because I never crossing over. There's no chance of them falling out. Okay. Now, I'm going to... Don't, don't reach up here and jump up and slam into your swing. Use a skill. The swing stays here under your bar. You walk back to it. You take your thumbs, hook the swing behind you, take the palms outside your hips. Bring the elbows in. I'm going to step under my bar. I push down, come under the toes. Right here, I can feel the front edge of the swing slipping under the buttocks. And then I'm going to bring in one leg at a time, sit down, and then I stabilize, I lift that other foot. I come into the swing with perfect stability and control. From here, I'm going to scoop forward so that I can just touch my toes onto the floor. Sit up straight, bringing the uh, hands in line with the shoulders. We'll do some leg lifts. I'm going to press my left foot down on the floor, lifting that right leg as high as I can. You can flex the foot or point the toes. I'm trying to bring the toes in line with the eyes, keeping the back straight, pulling the shoulders down and back, opening the chest, holding for three breaths. Whew. And another one with the left leg up. Three, two, one. And then we'll do it with both legs up. I can press my hand behind the swing, lift as high as I can, flexing both feet. Two, one. You see my head and neck? It's not leaning forward. It's pulled back like mountain pose. Okay. Next, we do some core work. I'm sitting on the front edge of the swing. Grabbing the swing here by the shoulders, pulling the knees up into the chest. Here you should be able to balance with the equal distance of knees and chest to the center. With the equal distance of the knees and chest to the center. Inhale back to plank, exhale knees to chest. Keeping the knees together, the feet flexed, head and shoulders back in line. Let's do three times. Two, inhale, exhale, three. We can do it with straight legs. One, 
two, inhale, exhale, three. On the last one, you can release the hands and hold it for three, two, one. If you really want to challenge yourself, do some cardio work, I'm going to do it fast with the knees bent, going halfway back and forth. For resting, I'm going, to cross, uh, I'm going to sit back a bit, cross the ankles. The shoulders are behind the swing. I lean forward, drop the arms and relax the head and neck. But if, you, if your if ankles are not crossed, what happens, your knees open, lock it, and we're stable. We can rest more deeply. Okay, next we can do some uh, arms and chest exercises. I'm gonna scoop back to create some space in between the chest. I, I cross the ankles to lock the knees together. Placing the hands outside the shoulders, the elbows come up. Inhale, exhale, pressing the hands together, slowly releasing. Inhale, exhale. Trying to keep the spine straight head and neck in line, elbows in line with the wrists, pushing all the way in, trying to touch. We can do it five times. Last one, you can push and hold. This is a great exercise for strengthening the outer pectoral muscles, which are usually undeveloped. This is a really strange exercise uh, that we're not often doing in yoga or in general at the gym and fitness without some kind of special device. Okay, so that was the palm press. Now we can do forearm press by placing our elbow into the sides, pulling the arms down, shoulders back, chest is open, inhale, exhale, pulling the forearms in, trying to touch. That's one, inhale, exhale, two, three, Four. Last one, push and hold for three, two, and one. Shake it out. Really nice, strengthening that chest, shoulders, arms. In, uh, in new ways, working the undeveloped muscles. Next, we're going to uh, flip out of the swing. You're going to scoot forward. The front edge of the swing is under the buttocks. Here's a trick. You push and pull the spin around so I can demonstrate the back edge of the swing. Now I want it here at the waistline, just above the tailbone, yeah? I'm going to pull the knees into the chest, the hands here in line with the shoulders. Uh, here's what not to do. Uh, I, don't straighten the legs, don't separate the legs. Don't leave the knees here while you bring the back down. Stay tucked tight. First we practice by leaning back, straightening the arms, drawing the knees back through the center, and then pulling up. Don't do that too many times or you will feel nauseous. Then we're just gonna carry it through and come all the way down. Stay tucked tight, flex the feet. Hands are in line with the shoulders. You need to scoot forward to the front edge of the swing. And we come all the way down. We land on the toes. You can come to child's pose or the hands and knees. We do a couple cat and cow stretches. So that is how we transition out of inversions later on, but we can practice it here. Okay, let's come up to stand. Let me demonstrate what not to do there. It's important. I'm sitting too far back now. What happens? My knees are up here and I'm a bit afraid what's going on. And then I slip down, hooks onto the knees. Okay, no problem. I slide the hands down, tuck the chin, land on my back. Okay. 
So next, we'll do some standing spinal traction followed by inversions. Now, not everyone likes inversions or they think they do, but then they go upside down and they feel nauseous and then they can't continue the rest of the class. That is why I put them at the end of the class. But um, we can still do some nice poses uh, for traction and decompressing the spine, which don't involve going upside down and are more accessible to people. So for this, uh, the swing is up here at inversion height, um, which is what? For me, it's uh, here's above the knee. Here's my uh, navel. I find the space between there. And that's exactly where the swing is now. That's the perfect uh, lowest setting that I will use for inversion or for standing spinal traction. So I will fold the swing up now. One, two, three, or four. Push it down and bring it behind me. I'm going to place the swing not up into the armpits, not into the lower back, but just here under the shoulder blades. And then I will hold it in place with my thumbs. What everyone does, and it drives me nuts, is uh, they do it and then they're like, yeah, okay. And then and they release the hands and it goes up into the armpits. Hold it here, okay. And then we're going to walk to the center, all right? We're not back here, but we're trying to sit up straight. We've got the feet here under the knees. The feet are spread hips width distance, okay? We're gonna straighten and uh, bend the legs, pushing back and forth, flexing the heels, coming onto the toes, inhale and exhale, pushing the hips back and forth, lifting the chin up and down. I can do it five times, yeah? To come out, don't stand up here, walk back. Pull yourself out. Because we'll be doing uh, several exercises each time. Uh, you're going to feel more and more uh, traction in the spine, which is great, but your, your spine becomes weaker and weaker. And so if you transition out of here, which is in a way that's straining and stressing your back, you can tweak something which you cannot undo. Next, we can take it a step further. Again, uh, the, the swing here is under the shoulder blades. I'm gonna block it with the thumbs. I push back, I'm going to push forward, coming up onto the toes, and then I swing back, arching the spine, dropping down. Let's just do it three times. Inhale, flexing the feet, arching the spine, pushing forward, lifting the heel, balancing on the toes. I've lost count. If you do it too many times, you might feel nausea. Okay, if you have students prone to nausea, don't even do that. Walk up, pull out, take a rest. Each time you feel taller and taller. Next one. Walk to the center. Going to spread the feet wider outside the mat. I'm going to make circles by straightening one leg, bending the other leg, pushing around the back, coming around the front, shifting the weight from the heels to the toes, from the big toe to the small toe. Inhale, exhale. Let's do five times. Now, if you've got a crowded class, you need to really synchronize everyone or just not do it. People will, and then you come to the back and stop, change sides, inhale forward, exhale back. No matter what you do or how you demonstrate, some people just won't get it. Uh, they're gonna work at their own speeds. Uh, some are going faster or slower. Some people mix up left and right. And so if they are knocking into each other, at this time in the class, you should have a good idea of you know, how uh, successful this will be. 
And it's kind of funny if people knock into each other, but then ultimately if it happens again and again, but you, you won't be able to uh, do the technique, right? So we're coming up and out. Feels great. I feel taller and taller. I love it. Uh, next one, we'll do a twist. Placing the swing again uh, under the shoulder blades. This time I bring the feet together. So notice here, I'm not back here. I'm directly under the bar. The feet are pulled, the toes under the knees here, all right? I'm going to pivot on the toes as I inhale, exhale, twisting back. Look at my toes and the feet cross over. Inhale, exhale. Not everyone likes this because as we twist and cross the straps, it's squeezing us tighter. This is the only time in my class where the straps cross. And you know what? There is a slight chance that the hooks could lock onto each other if you don't uh, uh, close the turnbuckle. I don't like to do more than two on each side because we're uh, twisting and spinning. You could uh, get nauseous. So pulling slowly out of the swing. Take a few breaths here. Okay, one more, the best one. Where's my microphone? Here it is. Okay, one more, the best one. This time I will place the swing down as low as I can. I'm even going to come onto the toes and lift the heels, but I'm not dropping into a back bend. I'm gonna walk to the center now I have one foot forward, one foot back, and then I'm slowly, slowly sliding down to the floor. The swing is massaging my back and it's pulling on to the vertebrae, creating space between the discs. As I drop down lower and lower, feels wonderful. As I get, okay, the best one. I'm going to place the swing down here into the lower part of the back. I walk towards the center, sitting up straight. I'll bring here my left foot forward, right foot back. Hands are up here by the head, and then I'm slowly, slowly going to slide down. As I do, the swing's pushing into the back, massaging the muscles and dragging along the spine, pulling the vertebrae apart, creating space between the intervertebral discs. Um, as the discs compress through standing and sitting throughout your life, that compresses the nerves, which is the root cause of pain because the nerves connect to different parts of the body, which then go up the spinal cord into the brain and the brain registers that as pain. The lower you go, the higher your arms will stretch up. I'm arching the spine back. My knee touches the floor. I'll bring the other foot back. Slowly, slowly coming down to the hands and knees. I want to do it again. So I'm just going to reactivate the spine by coming up and down from cat and cow. If you were to do it just one time, you could go into a child's pose. One more time. I'll do it from behind so you can see. So I place the swing down here to the lower part of the back. I walk back so that then it's locked in place. I walk towards the center, keeping the spine straight, coming under the bar, one foot forward, one foot back. Hands up to the head. I start to slowly slide down. Arching back, lifting the chin, reaching up. The slower you go, the better it is. The more time the swing has to push into the muscles, massaging them, pulling the discs apart. Oh. 
Inhale, exhale. Pulling the discs apart, that's technically, it is creating space between the discs through traction, okay? Coming up, we are ready for inversions, yeah? So we open the swing. Again, what you don't do is you reach up here and jump up into the swing. You're going to reach behind, uh, grabbing the swing with the thumbs. The hands come outside here. I bring the elbows in. I push down, come on to the toes, sit into the swing one buttock at a time. The back edge of the swing here comes up above uh, the waistline. I'm going to open the knees, keeping the legs bent. The hands are up here by the shoulders. I lean back, the knees come outside the swing, and then I wrap the feet around. Bring the hands down. To come out, I'm gonna reach up, grab the space here, um, and then I'll show you the easy way. I'm just gonna pull up and immediately jump down to child's pose. Or you can roll onto the back in Shavasana, okay? Don't stand up and look around the room. You need to immediately come down and rest or you will get nauseous. What not to do? So if I am sitting too far back, what happens? I'm going to slip out. That's okay, just slide the hands down, straighten the legs, and easily land on the floor. If I get into the swing, if you're a student and I get into the swing facing you, I come down, now you cannot see me. What else not to do? Um, well, if the hands are too low and then I wrap the legs around, now they're stuck. If the hands are too high, uh, I can't come back down all the way. There's no need to straighten the legs so wide. I'm gonna kick somebody next to me or I kick the wall and then it's actually, I find it more difficult to wrap the legs around. Before we practiced uh, bringing the knees into the chest, coming back and forth to plank, bend the knees into the chest and then open the legs, lean back, wrap the legs around, release the hands to the floor. Don't push up, lightly touching the floor for stability. We don't need to bring the feet together and down. That's actually more painful for the low back as it's pushing uh, it forward. I like to straighten the legs halfway. And then as well, the, the back edge of the swing here, the higher it is and the, the harder it's pushing into the lower lumbar spine, the more painful it will be. Uh, so I've got the, the back edge of the swing here into, under the tailbone, like on the upper part of the buttock. That, but if it's too low, I'm going to slide down and hit my head. So I want to have at least one hand under the head here at that about, let's see, one and a quarter to be precise. What can I do here? Um, what I like is uh, to interlace the hands behind the neck. You bring the forearms under the cheekbones, relax the head and neck, pull it down. And then slowly release. You can do that a few times and you can hold it for each one. It's really nice cervical decompression. You can walk the hands forward. Drop the chest between the shoulders. Mm. You can twist side to side. You can push off and swing. You can uh, do some core work. Press the feet into the sides here. You can bring the hands behind the head. Inhale and exhale, coming up and down. Or bending side to side, inhale, exhale. We can do pigeon pose. 
or dancer pose. Let's do pigeon. So here's my left foot. It's going to come back through the center, hook behind the right strap, and then I unwrap the right leg. Right hand grabs the right ankle, left hand grabs the ankle, pulling the foot down, drawing the knee down, shoulders back, relaxing the head and neck back. Inhale, exhale. Changing sides by doing everything in reverse. Left hand, right hand, wrap the leg around and then unhook the foot. What happens if I make a mistake? I'm going to unwrap the leg and then doot, I start to slip down. No. First hook the foot and then unwrap the leg. This is my left leg. I don't grab with the right hand. I grab with the left hand because it's closer and then I pull it down. And it's much easier to grab now with the other hand. Pulling the knee down, drawing the shoulders back. Coming out the same way. Unhook, feet together. We can do dancer pose variation, which is very similar, only now I'll wrap one leg around one side instead of hooking behind. It's more painful, but it achieves the same thing. And I find it more strain on the knee. Maybe it looks better. What else can we do? Handstand. So uh, the swing is a bit low. I've got here, uh, as I've slipped down a bit, changing from pose to pose, I've got about one hand under my head. I know it's going to be challenging to do a uh, handstand here, but let's try. So I'll place the hands behind, uh, below my head with the fingers spread wide, and then I'll straighten both legs, wrap it around on each side. I'm going to uh, Straighten the arms, pushing straight up and drawing the legs inward. Okay, the swing's holding me, I don't know, maybe 30%. And if I lean to one side, I can just do it. One-handed handstand. Uh, as I bend the arms to release, I unwrap the feet. Okay. If I uh, sit up and stand up from here, I am going to feel terrible. Better is to flip out as we practice. So um, as you see, my legs are straight and the gap is closed and it's high. But if I bend the knees, bring the feet together, it opens the gap and it brings it lower. So I reach up, I grab the swing here under the knees, unwrap the legs, I bring the knees together, and then I flip down. You can go into child's pose. I recommend immediately rolling over to the back in Shavasana and just resting here. Now, with this inversion, the Baddha Konasana, it's pushing the back, which can be painful. So we need to do a counter pose. A child's pose is a nice forward bending counter pose, but it's still inverted because the head is below the back, blood is rushing into the head. Uh, as I was just doing inversions, I want to neutralize the blood flow so that I can stand up. So I won't do a child's pose, but I still need to do a counter pose for um, a forward bending. So pulling one knee into the chest, pulling both knees into the chest, doing a happy baby. But to be fair, that's still inverted. The legs are above the body, blood is flowing in. What else could we do? We could do a pigeon pose. Another point is with the Baddha Konasana, as the legs were wrapped around the sides, sometimes that's stressing the knee. And so a pigeon pose, it's a great counter pose you know, for knee pain and helps for lower back pain. Now, the longer you are inverted, the longer you should rest. And coming up slowly. You 
you'll feel over time the flow of blood, your head growing lighter and lighter. If you push it, you'll feel nauseous. You don't want to do that. Supta Baddha Konasana, inverted bone angle. It's a lot easier to do when the swing is open. Uh, usually you're working with the regular hammocks where it's bunched up into the back. It's a lot more painful, but in some ways it is better because it allows the back to be straighter. So with my swing, we simply fold it up one, two, three, four times. And then I find it most comfortable to place it just below the sacrum, actually, just below the tailbone on the upper part of the buttocks. If it's any lower, you're going to slide out. So it's a bit tricky to get it in place. You need to come up to plank here and then squirm around. And then you can wrap the legs around. Like this, yeah, it feels better. The, the lower back is straighter. Um, and it's a uh, you know, moderate pain here uh, on the legs, but you get used to it. Uh, another pose we can do here is uh, the bow pose. So I'm going to unwrap both legs. I slowly bring the hands up to stabilize. I can grab the ankles and pull down. Now, if the swing is too high, it's pressing into the lower lumbar spine. Very painful, very dangerous. If it's any lower, I could slip down out. It has to be just perfect. That's why it is safer to have the swing open, but it feels uh, better to have the swing folded uh, as it puts the pressure point on a, a more narrow range. You know, you may prefer uh, one or the other. Okay, coming out of here, I'm gonna flip down, come into child's pose, as the boat pose is an intensive uh, back bend, we need to counter that. Child's pose is a good place to start. And here I would roll over to the back. And as I explained, the, some of the options are pulling the knees into the chest, one by one, or together. Um, and after you rest it for one or two minutes, allowing the blood to uh, uh, balance out neutral, we can do a more intensive forward bending pose, such as Paschimottanasana, seated forward fold, Chakshasana, the one leg uh, bent. We can do the Badakanasana, seated to bound angle butterfly pose. Okay? Look at this. Now, as I'm inverted here in a bound angle, you see I've got uh, about one and a half hands under my head. So I know for experience that as I'm doing a forward bending uh, inversion, my head will be much closer to the floor, but that might be suitable. So again, I have the swing folded over three or four times to make you know, a softer cushion belt. Um, as we were before doing a forward bending postures, I want the swing to be down here at the upper part of the legs, not on the hips, not into the stomach. So I need to demonstrate uh, halfway facing you and then halfway facing away from you. So I bring the hands through the swing. I push down with the heels, come onto the toes. I hold the swing in place here. Then I tiptoe forward, spreading the feet wider as I fold forward, touch the floor, and then walk back to the center, bring the hands and feet up to ensure that I'm under the bar. And then, you don't want to walk forward. Coming up and out of the pose, you're gonna get a big blood rush. You wanna flip over, but I'm going to face the other direction. It will be easier to demonstrate. Again, I bring the arms through the center, I'm pushing down, pressing it onto the upper, part of the leg, tiptoe forward, spreading the legs wide, and fold forward, touch down. What you don't want to do is you have the legs together, you fold forward, and then you slip. Spread the legs wider, 
kept one hand holding the swing in place as he folds forward, touch the arm, walk back. Okay, now placing the hands down here under the head, I can lift the legs up parallel to the floor. The swing is sliding uh, further down into the upper part of the leg. Now my back is perfectly flat, whereas before the legs were wrapped around and it was pushing the lower lumbar spine inward. Here I can completely relax. And you see my head is a little closer to the floor here. What uh, mistake people usually make is that the swing is too high. It's pressing here onto the hip, onto the pelvis, which is painful. And then I try to lift the legs and I can't. I need to push the swing down lower so that the legs can come up higher and I'm at this nice 90 degree angle. From here, I can bend the knees, bringing the feet above the knees, the knees in line with the hips, the hips above the shoulders, making these 90 degree angles. Uh, when the legs are bent here, you might feel more pain here in the thigh. So again, you can use a, a cushion or a towel, but I feel much uh, more intense uh, decompression. The lower lumbar uh, sacral spine feels wonderful. If you can balance here nicely, we can also do a spinal twist. So I'll place here my left hand onto the sacrum, the fingers pointing up, lightly pressed inward. Here's my right hand, then across over to the left side, right? I keep the knees together. Don't bend the knee, feet back. As you see, if I bend the feet back, my head's uh, falling forward. But if I straighten the legs and the feet come down, that's lifting the upper torso. So I want it balanced here. I take the right hand, cross it over the left, relax the spine, relax the head and neck. Inhale, exhale, I'm pulling my legs to the right and twisting back to the left, looking away. You can hold here for three to five breaths. Then you come to the center here. Before you change sides, take a couple breaths. Switch, inhale, exhale. With my left hand, I'm grabbing the right knee, holding it to the left, while I twist back to the right, looking away. Holding for three to five breaths. Slowly releasing. Then I reach up, I grab the swing. The thumbs are pointing towards the knees, the fingers are pointing back, I'm reaching up here above the hips. I'm going to bend the knees, bring the knees up, and then I'm going to slip back and down, landing on one foot, and then laying down on the back into Shavasana. So that's my favorite pose. We're inverted and we have spinal traction. Um, it's a pose where people can do one time or they can repeat two times, left side, right side, left side, right side. Um, and then we land in Shavasana, of course. And so people who enjoy inversions and want to uh, repeat it and stay in there longer can. People who uh, are uh, feeling nauseous and just want to come down, they can as well. And then uh, you can end the class in Shavasana, chanting Om here. Therefore, people who need more time to recover uh, can just lay on the floor. Uh, and those who are maybe more experienced or they, you know, have an appointment, uh, they can also rush off. So let's finish here with chanting Om. Uh, chanting Om in Shavasana. We need to swallow to clear the saliva from the throat. You can bring the hands to the chest or just continue resting down onto the floor. And we inhale and exhale, chanting 